So years before I came to ESA, I used to watch these art talks, and I saw people standing where I'm standing right now, not only making groundbreaking work, but being a part of something limitless. This year was such a turning point for me because impossible things became possible. So now I'm gonna show you a body of work I never thought I was capable of building and that I am truly proud of. I wanna start with the reason we're all sitting here together right now, this community that has been built from ESA Contemporary Art Program. This is the painting I made this year titled Building a Home. Previously, I've been making work about distance, painting from inside subway windows and behind houses, painting the separation that the pandemic caused. This is about closeness. It captures a single moment in time where I felt completely at home. Here I'm presenting a body of work to the grade tens at ESA, and I created this life-size visual experience and representation of our community. So this is room 102. It's a room that has brought so many people together. The people who were in the painting were slowly able to discover they were the ones who were painted, and I was able to experience the impact my work has on other people. The way I see ESACA and the way I see art has always been the same. It's a place to go. So I then began working on a body of work consisting of Toronto buildings. I started with 888 DuPont, built in 1921, originally a broom and mop factory employing blind veterans. It was then turned into affordable studio space for Toronto artists. Soon after spending significant amounts of time with this building, I learned it was being demolished due to condo development, evicting over 60 Toronto artists. So that's what began the series, the consistent loss that our world is experiencing and the realization that where I'm going is disappearing. Each painting has a history, each memory has a history, each interaction and touch and broken window all have their own histories. In painting this building and all the history and love and loss beneath each wall, I'm able to preserve what might have been lost. The series then continued into something where I could love places and be loved back. I became obsessed with the stories surrounding a building, each place being attached to love and to life. Allowing myself to care so deeply about these communities made me feel close to people, like I am a part of something bigger than myself. It became a series where I could connect to the world. So these paintings are of Toronto galleries. One thing that allowed me to grow and change this year was integrating with the Toronto art community. I spent practically every Saturday at Toronto galleries and instantly felt accepted by this group of people I'd always been working towards to be like. It became clear to me that everything I'd ever wanted was a lot closer than I had thought. These Saturdays, I decided to start sharing with my mom, showing her why I was doing all of this, showing her what makes giving art everything worth it. So similar to the first painting of the ESA classroom, these are paintings of homes. We got to become a part of this world that loves art as much as I do. It wasn't just my thing anymore, it is ours. Getting to share this with her made her understand more of who I am. It became a place for us to go. The stability I have from this relationship and feeling grounded to this bigger world then led to my most honest work. These are all large scale oil on canvas paintings and although they look separate from a lot of my work, they feel as if they have been inside me my entire life. I wanted to make something that was so dependent on movement because it feels like the most honest way to tell my story. Turning emotion, experience, and memory into something physical outside of myself helped me to understand why I needed to feel everything instead of pretending I felt nothing. 
I can acknowledge the anger and loss and hurt inside of me. And although I can let go of parts of this, this work allows me to accept that it will always be a part of who I am. I will always carry this heaviness. And these paintings allow me to live with that. But even though they are about anger and guilt and distance, they are also about love and hope and closeness. This process of letting go and then experiencing what is left is the process that makes me feel more human. So these guys are all like oil and panel paintings of significant pieces of writing I've collected through generations of family. They are about what we hold, both the things we hold in boxes in our basements and the things we hold inside ourselves. This is the first book I could read by myself. This is the letter I read every day when I couldn't see the person who wrote it. A few weeks ago, I went searching through boxes of stuff my family's kept over time, and this is when I realized I made something conscious of change. This is the diary entry my mom wrote when she was 11. This is a piece of the talk you're listening to right now. They use time to tell stories. I can see how similar a child is to its parents, how different eight-year-old me and nine-year-old me were, how we are all bound by love and change. They're made to protect what I'm both so scared of losing yet remembering. My grandmother isn't here anymore, but I still have the book she gave my dad when I was born. This best friend moved away, but I still have the goodbye letter she left behind. Using subjects only created because I am here, I can feel less separate from all the life that is around me. Handwriting will change and best friends will move away, but because of this work, I have something to remember relationships, moments, and passing time. I have something to love me and hold me. So before I go, I just want to thank everyone who unconditionally supported me through all this. Looking out at all of you, I'm reminded of the 12-year-old who never thought I'd be standing here tonight. So thank you to everyone and everything that has led up to this. Thank you for getting me to this moment.